Sila tayo tuloy. Raghubadi Raghava Raja Ram Padita Pavana Sita Ram Raghubadi Raghava Raja Ram Padita Pavana Sita Ram Dasaradha Nandana Raja Ram Janaki Vallabha Sita Ram Dasaradha Nandana Raja Ram Janaki Vallabha Sita Ram Raghubadi Raghava Raja Ram Padita Pavana Sita Ram Dasaradha Nandana Raja Ram Janaki Vallabha Sita Ram Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai 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 Ram Ram Jai Ram Sri Ram 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 Jai Ram Sakal Jeeva Samrachaka Ram Samastha Loka Janaka Ram 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 Jai Raja Ram 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 Jai Sita Ram 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 Jai Raja Ram 
राम राम जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम 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 जय राजा राम 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 जय सीता राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय 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 राम रमंते योगिनो नंते सत्यानंद रामने रामापदे ने सौ परम ब्रह्मा विजायते द योगीज आर सिटिंग इन द फॉरेस्ट विदाउट एटिंग एनीथिंग दे आर अंडरगोइंग अ ग्रेट ऑस्टरिटी बट दे आर एबल टू सस्टेन देयर लाइफ फॉर अ वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम बिकॉज दे ऑलवेज चंटिंग रमंते योगिनो नंते रामा मीन्स हैप्पीनेस that by simply uttering the name of ram a person becomes very happier in his life purusha ramacharitam shravana mupadaraya nanusamsaya pararajan karma bandha vimukshaye those who are very fortunate to hear the past time of lord ram they get the greatest blessing from the lord where all the karma the reaction of the karma <coughs> will be wiped out from their life and they will be getting a great blessing of the lord in the journey of going back to god is <coughs> वेद वेद वरापुंसे जद दशरथम जेद साक्षात सुप्रसाक्षा साक्षात न रायण आत्मन द वेदास एव कम टू द वर्ल्ड टू रिमाइंड द पीपल 
of the existence of the Lord. Repeatedly the Vedas are coming to the world to remind the people of the existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But unfortunately, due to the ignorance, people were not attracted to the injunction of the Vedas. They do not hear the subject matter of the Vedas. Now the Veda itself has become Lord Ram. So there is no difference between Lord Ram and the Vedas. Veda is meant to remind the people, enlighten the people on the subject matter of Krishna consciousness, but somewhere or other people were not that inclined towards reading the Vedas. Now the Vedas transformed into becoming Lord Ram. Yada yada ye dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata habyudanam dharmasya saladmanam sujam mi aham paritranaya sadhunasnam vinasaya cha duskritam dharmasam sapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge janma karma chame divyam Evam yoveti tadvataha tyakum dehum puna janma naiti mamiti so arjuna. The Lord has declared in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 7, 8, and 9. Then, whenever and wherever there are decline in the religious practice and the uprising of the irreligious activities, the Lord comes to the world. When He comes to the world, He re-establishes the principle of Dharma and He protects those who are the followers of the Dharma, the saintly people, and He also kills those who are going against the path of Dharma. And anybody who understands the real meaning and appearance and activities of the Lord in this world. Upon giving up their life from this world, they return to the abode of the Lord. Once they have gone back to the abode of the Lord, they do not again come back to this miserable material world. So, we have to understand what are the principles of religion when it declines, the Lord comes. The principle of religion has been mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavadam, <coughs> Kento 7, Chapter 11, Text 2, Text 5, Text 6, and 7 to 12 onward. Bhagavan Srotam Ichami Nirnam Dharmam Sanatanam Varnashrama Charayuttam Yatpuman Vindate Param There is a question by Yudhisthya Maharaj to Narada Muni and Yudhisthya Maharaj wants to know the principle of religion which becomes the ultimate goal of human life. And Yudhisthya Maharaj asked Narada Muni to explain to him the general occupational duties in the world and the social and spiritual order of a human society. How to take care of your body, how to take care of your soul, how to interact with the people at large out there. So this cover, he said, this is called the Sanatan Dharma, the eternal constitutional position of the <coughs> living being. So these are the questions I've asked by Yudhisthya to Narada Muni in the Canto 7, Chapter 11, Text 2, and the Text 5. On the same canto, chapter 7, Narada Muni answered, He said, Nadva Bhagavate Jaya Lokanam Dharmam Sethave 
वक्षयसे सनातन धर्मम नारायणम मुखम श्रुतम नारद मुनि से मैं लिए युधिष्ठ महाराज लॉर्ड नारायण ना पर्सनली एफ इंस्ट्रक्टेड मी ऑन द पाथ ऑफ द सनातन धर्म द थर्टी प्रिंसिपल्स व्हिच अपलिफ्ट द कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ द लिविंग बीइंग and brings a very great value in their life dharmam mulame hi bhagavan sarva vedamayo arihi smartam chatar viram rajan yena chatma prasidhati in the same canto 7 chapter 11 text 7 narada muni explains that lord krishna is the root of the dharma he says he is the essence of all the knowledge he is the essence of all the vedas he is the essence of the memory of the sadhus and all in all he is the root cause of everything in the world nirnamayam paro dharma मोहम्मदन Somebody claims to be a Hindu. It's nothing to do with the external appearance of this so-called this ism and that ism. Importantly, a person is known by his character. Whatever he has studied in his life is a secondary subject matter. The primary subject matter matter is that his character should be good. So Lord Ram coming to the world to show how the character should be. and krishna coming to remind you about the knowledge about the character and chaitanya mahaprabhu comes he says you know with the character with the knowledge without love you are useless so he brings the love to the world so the character why ram comes first with the character why later krishna comes to remind you about the knowledge because that is the way god function in the universe human being they speak so much about everything but they do not follow what they speak but god does thing first then he speak later he show to the people this is the way to live then he speaks about how he is living a human being do opposite they talk 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 they don't do god do 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 then let they speak there's a different And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, with a good character, with lot of knowledge, if you don't have a love in your heart, nobody wants to be your friend. You're useless. So the Lord comes in a different way. Now here, you listen to Maharaj ask the questions of Tunara the Muni. That what is the religious principle becomes the ultimate goal of life. Then Narada Muni said, "Personally, the Lord has spoken to Narada Muni about the thirty principle. Is known as the religious principle, and to be followed by human being. When this principle of religions are going down, reducing and reducing, the Lord personally comes again to make sure that the thirty principle are to be reminded and to be followed by the human society." Now the thirty principle has been explained in the Canto Seven, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, Chapter Eleven, Text Eight, Text Nine, Text Ten, Text Eleven, and Text Twelve. Satyam daya tapa saucham, titik seksha samodhama, ahimsa brahmacharyam cha. In the first loka, it be mentioned, a human being should be very truthful. 
सत्यम दया तपासौचम तितिक सेक्षा समादया अहिंसा ब्रह्मचार्यम च त्यागा स्वध्यायम अर्जवम संतोषम समद्रिक्षे व ग्रम्येयो परमम सने निर्नम विपर्येयक्ष माउनमात्मम विमर्शनम अन्नादयो संविभागो बोते ब्योचा यदा अर्था तेस्वात्मो देवता बुद्धि सुतरम निर्शु पांडवा सावनम कीर्तनम चश्या समरनाम महताम गते सेवच्या वनते दास्यम साक्यम आत्मम समर्पनम so the first principle is that human beings should be very truthful. The second, they should become very kind. The third, they should perform austerity. The fourth, they should be very follow the path of cleanliness. The fifth, they should be very tolerant. And the sixth, they should be able to distinguish between good and bad. The seventh, they should control their mind. Eight, they should be able to control their senses. And the nine, they should be performing a life of celibacy. And the ten, they should be free from any kinds of violence. And number eleven, they should perform charity. And number twelve, they should also read the scriptures. <clears throat> Number 13, they should be very simple. Number 14, they should be satisfied with whatever they have got. 19, they should be, 15, they should be doing some service for the saintly people. And the 14, they should not waste their time. 15, they should not indulge in the so-called bodily philanthropical work and the 18 they should be very maunum very silent and 19 they should able to see the difference between body and soul 20 they should give food distribution without any discrimination and 21 they should understand they are very divine and 22, they should hear the glories of the Lord. 23, they should be chanting the holy name of the Lord. 24, they should remember the glories of the Lord. 25, they should do menial service for the pleasure of the Lord. 26, they should bow down in front of the Lord. 27, they should do some puja for the Lord. 28, they should be a servant of the Lord. 29, they should be a friend of the Lord. And 30, they should surrender, give their very self unto the Supreme Personality of God. These are the 30 principles. A human being, the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus, and all the human people around the world, human beings, should follow. Simply putting a rubber stamp, I'm a Hare Krishna, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Christian, will never help anybody. Krishna is more attracted to the divine quality of the living being, not the demoniac qualities. And here, yeah, Krishna comes easy. Rama di murti tu nayak nala mena tista na na vataram akaror bhuvane sukintu Krishnam swayam samabhavat paramapumanyo govinda madhi purusham tamaham bhajami. Lord Brahma says that Rama comes to the world, but the origin of all the avatar incarnation and appearance of the Lord is Krishna Himself. Vite chamsa. Kala Pumsa Krishna Su Bhagavan Swaya Mindrari Vyakala Lokam Mirlayanti Yuge Yuge In every Yuga millennium the Lord appears in whatever forms but He comes in a different forms to perform His Leela but Krishna is the 
original supreme personality of God. There is no difference between Lord Ram and Lord Krishna. That been explained. When Arjuna was going around, he went to uh, Rameswaram. There he met Anuman. And Anuman was lying, sitting and lying down. And Arjuna asked him, who are you? You look very big monkey. And Anuman says, no, I am the humble servant of Ram. He did not say, I am the big senior devotee of Ram. Yeah, you see, all these things, you learn something from them. When he met Sitarani, you know, in the forest, you know, of Lanka, Ashoka forest. And he was sitting in the tree and then he looked at Sita. Then you know that Sita is there, found Sita. And then he was thinking how to bring the message to Sita about Ram. And he understand that Sita disappointed, frustrated because of Ravana. Because Ravana have taken different, different forms to cheat Sita. He wants to attain Sita, but he was not able to do anything to Sita because he had got a curse by Nalakuvera, the son of Kubera. Why? Because Nalakuvera, his brother is the Kubera, his brother's son is the Nalakuvera, then he was married to Ramba. You know, then he supposed, the girl supposed to be like his own daughter. But, you know, Ravana was attracted to this girl. And then he went to rape this girl. So Nalakuvera came to know, he cursed him next time without the, you know, um, uh, permission of a woman, you touch them, you do anything to them, and you will finish, you will die. So for that reason, Ravana is trying to get the permission of Sita to enjoy her, but, you know, Sita is devoted to Ram. And he took many, even took a form of Ram and went to Sita, but she will be able to understand he's not, you know, Ram. Actually, he's a anu, Ravana coming, disguising in that form. And Anuman was thinking that the right way I should send a message to Sita. So as a devotee, every single thing we do, we have to sit and use the proper, the right words. Because there is a dharma in your words. In the chapter 17, 14, 15, and 16 of Bhagavad Gita. You know, the Lord said, Leva Dveja Guru Pragya Pujartam Saucham Arjavam Ahimsa Brahmacharyam Cha Sariram Tabam Uchete The austerity for the body, the dharma for the body. The Lord says that one should respect their mother, one should respect their mother, father. One should respect the teacher, one should respect the Supreme Personality of God. By respecting a mother, you get all the opulences on this earth. By respecting your father, you get the opulences of the heavenly planet. By respecting a spiritual master, you get the kingdom of the Lord. And by worship of the Supreme Personality of God, you get his personal association. So Lord Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita chapter 17 text 14 that the dharma, the austerity for the body is that a person should respect mother, father, guru and Krishna. Then he should be also very simple and he also should be very free from violence and he should also follow the path of celibacy. Anurvegam karam vakyam satyam priyam itam chaya Swadhyaya Bhyasan Chaiva Vanmayam Tabham Uchyate in the chapter 17, text 15 of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said there is a hostility for the mouth, there is a dharma for the speech. Satyam Priyam, you sh only should speak what is truth, no lies in your talk. Priyam, whatever the truth you are trying to tell to the people, it has to be very palatable way. Even you are speaking something through, it's not, you know, throwing the words on their face, but it should be very palatable. And he says that one should not use, you know, to manipulate things in the material world for selfish interest. And he should be using his mouth to chant the holy name of the Lord to purify his mind. Mana prasadat samyadvam 
मन प्रसाद सम्यव निर्मल असमिश्रिया बवा सम सुधीर तपम मान सम उच्चते द धर्म फॉर द माइंड द ऑस्ट्रेटी फॉर द माइंड इज दैट इज फ्री फ्रॉम डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डुप्लिसिटी एंड इट इज वेरी यू नो सेटिस्फाइड a mind has been used you know for the purification of one's body so in this way krishna explains a different dharma so now anuman is sitting and he was thinking how to address how to approach you know um, sita devi that she won't be very you know put into a anxiety and she understand the message so he must know how to speak to krishna and the alwas you know the lord has appeared as a top 12 alwa the alwas have shown the way how you address the lord and when you are dying how to invite the lord how to address him how to call him how to you know interact with him so now anuman from the tree comes down to sita and sita asked him who are you and she was thinking that ravana is coming in that form And Anuman says, "Anjana Maina Vajuputra Sri Ramathuda Anjaneya Brahmacharya Anumane Chinnatiruvadi Marudiye." He says, "I am the putra, the son of Vayu, and my mother is Anjana, and I am a Brahmachari, and I am very humble." very chinna me very 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 small servant of ram and i brought the message for you and uh, sita says no you said you are very small how to believe you how you are f- you, f- you know fly f- from the other side to this side is about 800 miles not ordinary monkey can fly and anuman says a mother i'm very humble i'm very proud about myself so i flew from there all the humble monkeys already staying on the other side <laughs> they don't do want to show off anything right i come very sorry <laughs> so now yeah harjuna met anuman and arjuna asked him who are you the anuman says a humble servant of ram then anuman arjuna said oh you are that monkey You know, he said, "Is your ram is big?" Yes. Arjuna said, "I don't believe your ram is big." Anuman said, "Why? If your ram is big, why he needs the help of the monkeys to build the bridge? If it's big, why he needs the..." You know? And Arjuna said, "No." Anuman says, "No. It is the kind of mercy of Ram. He can do anything he likes, but he has given the work for monkeys to do just to." Engage them in his service; they can get purified. So Arjun said, "Your ram is not big." He said, "My Gandiva bow. He has got a Gandiva bow. My Gandiva bow is more greater than your ram." Anuman said, "Don't speak like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about my ram's power." Arjun said, "You don't know about my power of my Gandiva." Anuman said, "Let us now take a game, play a game. I will shoot arrow from my bow, and it will make a bridge. And if you think your ram is very powerful, you go and jump on the bridge. If the bridge breaks, and you are the loser, you must accept that my Gandhi was more powerful. And if you lose, then you have to set fire. You have to go and jump in the fire, give up your life." Anuman says, "Okay." And Arjuna says, "Not only that. If I lose, if you jump on the bridge, if the bridge you no know, remain the same, doesn't breaks, you no, know, then Arjun says, 'I will jump in the fire. Either one, we have to die.'" Anuman says, "Okay." So now Arjun took the you no know, Gandiva bow, and then with the great you know ego, he released you know arrow, then he made a beautiful bridge. and now anuman you know is always very humble and anuman thing of ram sri ram jayam sri ram jayam 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 
and he calls Ram, Sakala Jeeva Samratshaka Ram. You are the protector of all living beings. Samastha Loka Janaka Ram, Rama Rama Jaya Raja Ram. While uttering the name of Ram in the thoughts of Ram, he went and jumped on the bridge made by Arjun. And then the bridge broke into pieces. You know? And Anuman, he has to set fire, he has to kill himself. And Anuman now crying. Then he remembered Krishna. Then Anuman, he saw Anuman is calling his Ram. I have to call my Krishna. Govinda Jayo Jayo, Gopala Jayo Jayo, Govinda Jayo Jayo, Gopala Jayo Jayo. He called Krishna Govinda. And crying because he has to die. And Krishna appeared. Krishna asked him, what's the problem? No, I had a bit of game with Ram Devotee Anuman and I lost the game. And I have to throw myself into the fire. And uh, Krishna says, so after losing the game, you're calling me? <laughs> Look at Anuman. Before playing the game, he's already called Ram. He said, this is your problem, Arjun. What I've said in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, 7, Tasmat sarvesu kalesu ma manusmaran yudhya cha mayar pitamano buddhir ma me vasyasi asam sayam Abhyasa yoga yukte no chetasana nyagamina paramam purusam divyam yati partanu chintayam I told you, anything you do in your life, always think of me with your mind and intelligence, never deviate from this, easily you will obtain my mercy. Now look at you, what happens? You are very egoistic about the Gandhivam you have got in your head. Arjun say, sorry Govinda. Krishna said, many times he said that, I will take it. <laughs> then Krishna goes to Anuman. He asked Anuman, what is the problem? Anuman said, oh, there is your friend Arjun. Better tell him, <laughs> teach him something. He do not know the power of Ram. And he's simply insulting my Ram. So what happened? Then Anuman said, no, your friend Arjun called me for the game. I was simply sitting, lying down here. He called for the game. He said that his Gandhivam is more powerful than, you know, Ram. So he called me for the game and the, the, the promise is that if you lose the game then he has to you not know, take his life. So then Krishna said, okay, that is very good. Krishna said, I was not here to witness what has happened. So I do not know whether he is right or he is wrong. So Anuman, Krishna asked Anuman, when you and Arjun played that game, was there any referee? Anybody, you know, who been a referee in that game? Anuman said, no referee. Krishna said, without referee, the game is not, you know, bona fide. <laughs> it's not bona fide. So now let me become a referee. Now you play the game again. So Krishna goes to Arjun. Arjun. Chapter 8, text 7. Tasmat sarve su kale su ma manusma ram yudhya cha mayar pitamano buddhir ma me vasyasi asam sayam. Always think of me in all your activities with the mind and intelligence. No deviation. Okay? In that you know, consciousness you carry out your duty. Now Arjun already got the news message, you know, how he should shoot the arrow. Now he's ready, then he was shooting the arrow now. Sri Govinda Baja Govindam, Govindam Baja Govi, shoot the arrow in the name of Krishna. And beautiful bridge came again. And now Anuman goes, you know, Sri Ramajayam, Sri Ramajayam, he going and jump on the bridge, but the bridge, you know, didn't break this time. Remain the same. Now Anuman sitting and crying. He has to give up his life. Then Krishna called Arjun, called Anuman. Look, 
I am the same Krishna and I'm the same Ram. He showed the both form of Ram and Krishna. And then he told them, you are the same Hare Krishna, why are you fighting? <laughs> why are you fighting? Your, 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 your goal, goal is Krishna. There is no different. Not different people have got a different goal. All the devotees have got the same goal. So in this way, Ram comes to the world to re-establish the path of dharma, to attract the devotees towards him. And Ram is not an ordinary person. When Ravana was doing all kinds of, you know, adharmic activities, and uh, Ravana was thinking he's very powerful, so Narada Muni came and told Ravana, it's not you're all powerful. There is one thing is with Lord Shiva that's called Atmalinga. You know, the Linga, Atmalinga, Lord Shiva himself has got one Atmalinga. Unless you get the Atmalinga from Lord Shiva, otherwise you are not all powerful. So now Ravana go and meditate again upon Lord Shiva to get this Atmalinga from him so that he can become eternal. Then he was meditating, sitting and meditating after some time, Lord Shiva appeared. No? and with Parvati. So Lord Shiva asked, you know, Ravana, how can I help you? And Ravana opens his mouth to ask for Atmalinga. At that time, Maya Krishna, Krishna entered into the mind of the Ravana. Instead of asking for Atmalinga, he said, I like Parvati, <laughs> his wife. And Shiva said, okay, take and go. So he was working with Parvati. And Lord Shiva going at the back, and Narada Muni, he goes to Parvati, he said, Mother, Mother Parvati, you know whose fault is this? Not your husband's fault. It's your brother, Lord Vishnu, he has made this problem here. Actually, he came here to ask for Atmalinga, but your brother Vishnu entered in his mind. He said, you know, instead of Atmalinga, the words came out, is Parvati your name, it's your brother is the problem. And Parvati turned back and then she said, My dear brother, you put me into this difficulty. I curse you that you'll be coming to this world as Ram. And you'll be your wife will be taken away by another person and you'll go through the anxiety I'm going through today. So Lord Ram comes to the world to fulfill the desire of the Parvati where the Dharma is to be spoken and to re-establish. And on the other side, even Lord Ram, you know, when they were there, when Vishnu was Lakshmi in the spiritual world, and one time Lakshmi Devi told Vishnu that we need some privacy. You know, we're always dealing among each other, you know, so we need to deal separate, very private way. We need some privacy. And Lord Vishnu said, we're already in privacy. Nobody around here. What's your problem? She said, no, no. You see the Ananda Sesha? And she got, you know, thousands and millions of eyes and mouth. And she's watching. <laughs> so we need to go somewhere in the forest, privacy. And Vishnu said, okay, in that way that will appear. Then we'll be, you know, going to the forest, then we'll have some, you know, privacy in the forest. Now on the other side, Ravana is not an ordinary man because he is, you know, Jain Vijay, we were, who were, you know, guiding the, you know, the gates of the Vaikuntha. And the four Kumaras, you know, while traveling, they went to Vaikuntha. There are seven doors to the Vaikuntha. They already passed the six doors and then they came to the seventh door. And Jai Vijay, you know, the dog keepers, you know, get keeper, they said you cannot enter. Why? Because, you know, you don't have any dress on your body, you are children. Vaikuntha is not a playground for you to go and play, so you have to go back. And the uh, Kumaras got offended, they told them, Raja Stamabhyam Sarve Pada Molam Madhu Dvisa Papistam Asuram Yonim Balistam Yata Asitam And the dog gatekeepers, Jain Vidai, they said, you know, now the, now the Kumaras, they said, now 
You are standing at the Vaikuntha here, but you are influenced by mode of goodness, mode of passionate and ignorance. Those who are in the mode of passionate and ignorance, they cannot come closer to Lord Vishnu. So this place is not meant for you. You have to go to the material world. And they start crying. And Lord Vishnu, he came to know, he came from inside, he looked at them, he said, you know, what's the problem? No, these gatekeepers have given us a curse. Please lift the curse. And Vishnu said, I cannot lift the curse of other devotees. You know, you have offended, you know, the Brahmana. Because externally, you look at their body, their size, and, you know, the appearance, you thought they are not qualified. You cannot judge a devotee by external appearance. And they wanted to see me, they've come. And they know that somehow or other I'll give them, you know, the appearance, you know. So now you have to go. So they were crying what to do. So Krishna, Vishnu told them, you know, I'll give you two options. One, you take a birth, you know, three times as a devotee. No, three times as an enemy and seven times as a devotee. So which one you want to choose? So Jai and Vijay say seven times is too long to be away from you. So give us three life. So the first life they came to the world as, you know, um, Iranyakasipur and Iranyaksha. The second one they, you know, come to the world as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. And the third one they come as the Dantavakra and Sishupal. So in this way, Ram is not, you know, something, you know, ordinary human being. On the other side, Ravana also, not an ordinary human being. Even Ramana was so powerful, he captured the Navagraha, the nine planets. And in his palace, you know, where his seat is situated, there are nine steps. Are there? All these nine steps are made of these nine planets, you know. He captured the sun planet, moon planet, Mercury, and then, you know, Venus, and, uh, you know, um, Mars, and uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, and Kedu. So he captured all the nine planets, and he made a step out of that, and every time he go and sit in his asasan, he will step on them and go, <laughs> remind them that I'm very powerful. And they were, you know, all upside down, you know. Their, their face and belly all down on the ground and then he's stepping on the, you know, back and they were crying. And Narada Muni was very sad to see that, you know, this guy becomes so elegant. And only way that, you know, he must be seen by the Saturn planet. You know, normally in the Hindus, you know, they see the horoscope, everybody try to avoid the Saturn planet. But Saturn planet is a, just is a very disciplined planet. You know, he's a disciplinarian, you know, he's a very responsible. And then uh, he executes the karma of the living being, whatever difficulty, the punishment you have to go through, that is what the function of the Saturn, you know, he gives the punishment. So in every human life, you know, there are 30 years once, you know, for seven and a half years, the Saturn comes into their life. When the Saturn comes into your life, you know, you go through all kinds of problems. And people wait when the seven and the half years can finish, you know. So nobody likes the Saturn planet, you know. So now Narada thought only way to reduce his ego is that Saturn planet must look at him. <laughs> if she he looks at him and then his power will be reduced, you know. So then he went, Narada Muni went there, he went to Ravana. Oh, you know, what are, who are they, you know, the nine steps you have made. And he said, all oh, the Navagraha, the nine planets, I made them, you know, like this. And then uh, at that time, you know, Saturn planet was just raising his head like that. And Narada Muni said, even he put them upside down, you look at Saturn, you know, he's still trying to, you know, fight back with you. You see, he's, he's you know, just shaking his head. And Narada Muni said, you put him, you know, on, you know, on the other side and pressed him, you know. <laughs> Uh, Ravana put him on the other side, you know, where Satan looked at Ravana, that is the time, the seven and a half years of his life, you know, all the problem comes in. <laughs> so that is how Ravana, you know, controls everybody in the world. So in this way, both of them, Ram is not an ordinary person, and you know, Ravana is not an ordinary person, both are coming here to execute the, you know, the part of dharma for the upliftment of the human society. 
At one time, you know, Narada Muni was walking in the forest and he met a hunter whose name Ratnakar. And Ratnakar, you know, he kills the animal, half kill the animal, he robbed the people. Then he, when he met Narada, uh, Narada Muni, he wants to rob Narada Muni. Narada Muni has got only one tambura, nothing else with him. So Narada asked him, what you are doing, why you are doing this sinful work, you know, killing animals, all those things. And he says, no, I'm doing it for my families. Narada says, Asurya namate loke ande natama savrita eka pratya pijonanti. He says that, my dear Anta Ratnakar, by killing all these animals, don't you know that you'll go to a hellish planet? The Anta said, I'm doing it for my family. It's my duty, I'm doing it for my family. So Narada Muni asked him, with your family, you know, do your family will follow with you? to go to hellish planet. He said, I don't know, I have to go and talk to them. So he sent them, you know, send him and then the hunter went to the house and then he asked his wife, you know, told his wife, I met this sadhu, Narada Muni. He said, what I'm doing is very sinful, killing all these animals. So, you no, know, he said, for this I have to go to hellish planet. I told them I'm doing it for the family, all of you. So he asked whether you all will follow him to hellish planet. The wife said, that is your business, going to hellish planet. It's your duty to provide food for me. You married me, you took responsibility. It's your duty, going to hell, you go alone, I'm not coming. And he went to the children, asked the children, would you like to go to hell with me? The children said, I did not request to be born in the world. It is you, you know, done this thing, we are born. And you know, it's your duty to give us food. Going to hellish planet, you go by yourself, forget about us. So everybody, nobody wants to follow him. He came to, you know, um, Narada Muni. He says, nobody wants to follow me. You know, proper explain. Raja Putra Chiram Jeeva Ma Jeeva Muni Putra Ka Jeeva Vo Maro Itir Ma Jeeva Maro Hiti. And proper explains how he said the same person where he sees the four different people he give four different, you know, blessings for them. When he see a king, he bless the king, you live forever. Because this life you have become a king, you can enjoy everything. Next life, don't know whether you'll become a king. So this life is a great opportunity for, to, for you to enjoy, enjoy, live forever. And when he see a brahmachari, he bless the brahmachari, you immediately die. Because you have taken so much, you know, tapasya and austerity, sacrifice, just for the pleasure of the Lord. And you are going through a very difficult way of life just to please Krishna. So you immediately die and go back to Krishna, have a wonderful life in the abode of the Lord. When he sees, you know, the, the Griyasta family man, a family man who is married then you know, living in a way of principle of dharma, a family, he meets a family man, he bless the family man, saying that either you live or die, it doesn't matter. You want to live, you live. You want to die, you'll die, you go back to Krishna. When he see a butcher, then he told him, you don't live, you don't die. <laughs> While you are living, you're going to kill extra more and more, you know, animal. When you die ready, you're going to go to hellish planet. So living also inauspicious, dying also inauspicious for you. So anyway, when he came back to Narada Muni and told him, no family members want to follow me, and what I should do. Then Narada Muni said, now according to the Sastra, he said, look, you know, I'm just a simple aunt, I do not know any of the Sastra. So don't explain anything about that. What is I should do? Simply what I should do. Then he said, you have to chant the name of Rama. He said, even, you know, those things I cannot, you know, remember, cannot understand. I only know one, you know, word that is Mara. My father has taught me Mara means kill, you know. And there's the only word I've learned from my father, Mara. Other than that, I don't know anything else. And Narada Muni said, now you utter the name, Mara, 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 then come, Rama, 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 Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram, Padita Pavana Sita Ram, Dasaradhanandana Raja Ram, 
Janaki Vallabha Sitara. So for 16,000 years, you know, he was sitting and chanting the name of Mara in the beginning, it comes, you know, Ram, 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 Ram. So he's already, you know, the hand is already covered him. He was, and comes, you know, Narada Muni. Come to see his disciple, how he's doing, Ratnakar. Then he saw he still he was sitting and chanting. And he's already covered by the, you know, hand heel. And he broke the heel, he brought him out. And then he gave him the name Valmiki. And that time Valmiki asked, you know, Narada Muni, is there any one gentleman in the world, a first class human being? Is there any first class human being? And what is the quality of someone who is a first class? And that time Narada Muni said, yes, yes, there's one man born in Ayodhya. He's a first class human being. And what is quality? Then Narada Muni explained, a first class human being has got 24 qualities. He says, Gunavan, Viryavan, Dharmagya, Sakti, Kirtagya, Sakti, Vakya, you know, Dridhavrata, Charitraneshu, Koyukta, Sarvabestu, Kovita, Vidwan, Samarida, Jitta, Krodha, Dyuthiman, 12. The 13 is the Anusuyaka, 14, uh, Kasyabi, Devascha, Jataroga, Samyogam. And the 15 he says Aryan, 17 Sarva Samachaiva, 18 Sarva Bhute Sukhoika, and 19 you know, um, Pratibha. And, uh, and he says that you know um, Sarva Loka Priya, Sadhu Priya, Priya Vritti, Prakriti, you know, Kalyanamati. Anuvagita Parichyama and finally he said that you know Vinaya you know, Madhura Vachinyama. He said there are twenty four qualities of a first class man. He is born in Ayodhya, he is there and first quality he says Gunavan. He has got the total sum of you know all the wonderful qualities in himself, Gunavan. Number two, Vidya Viryavan is very talented person. Number three is a dharmagya, he follow the path of dharma. Number four is kritagya, he is very grateful to everybody, especially the devotee of him. And the fifth is, you know, satya is very truthful. And number six, you know, dhridavrata, he gives protection for everybody. And number seven, Charitrane Sukoyukta, that you know, is very exemplary in his dealing. And number eight, Sarva Bhuti Sukovita, he performed welfare work for every living being. And the ninth is a Vidwan, he has got a great wisdom in his life. Number ten, Samaridha, he is very competent. And number ten, Jita Krodha, he can control his anger. And eleven duty man is you no know, he attracts everybody. And number thirteen, Anusuyaka is free from any kinds of enviousness. And number fourteen, Devasya, you no know, Jitta Varga, he says that you know he is very courage in everything. And number fifteen, Arya is very civilized human being. And number sixteen is, you know, Samachaiva is equal to everybody in the world, equipose. And seventeen, Satpurusha is eternal. Eighteen, Pratibha is very dynamic, is a genius. And nineteen, he said, you know, Sarva Lokapriya, every living being trying to love him. And number twenty, Sadhu is, has got all the saintly qualities. And twenty-one, Priya, Priya Vritti, that he has got a very pleasant behavior. And number you know, uh, twenty-two, he said, you know, Prakriti Kalyanamati is very generous. And number twenty-three is, you know, Anuvagita Parichyama, that is, you know, very silent. He only speaks when there is required to speak. And number 24, he says, Vinaya Madhura Vachyanma, that he has got a wonderful, very sweet nature in himself. You know, he is the topmost, you know, character of the world. 
So these are the 24 four qualities of you know a first class human being, and now he is in uh, Ayodhya. So after telling him this thing, he left, and then you know, the hunter Ratnakari became a Valmiki. Then the next day morning, he was going to the Ganges River to take his bath. While walking, he saw on the tree that you know the two birds, I you know, boyfriend and girlfriend birds are sitting there, and they're chirping. They are you know, having you know a good you know happy moment. You know at that time, someone another hunter shot the arrow. <laughs> No? And at that moment, you know, Valmiki, you know, he look at him, he look at the bird, you know, the, the you know, the uh, male bird had been shot dead, you know, only female left is left, and he felt very sad. He said, Manishana Pratishtam Twaga Twaga Kama Saswati Sama no? Yad Krauncha Midunidekam Avadi Kamam Medhunam. He said that is very bad that you know the living entities want to have a very good life, happy life, and you now you have you know destroy the happiness. That's not very good for you know you in human life. You should let people to live. You should let yourself to live and let others to live. You see you have destroyed the happiness of others. So in this way he was you know, coming, he was very sad and Lord Brahma appeared in front of him. He said, now you are qualified, it's time for you to write Ramayana. Then Valmiki said, I do not know how to write. He said, that's the first sloka you already have mentioned. Ma Nishara this is the first sloka, start from there. So Brahma gave him the, you know, the intelligence, the memory to go back in the past and present. And you know, able to write the Ramayana. So he started, the, you know, the Ramayana Katha. So there was a place in Ayodhya where Lord, you know, where Na the Surat Manan, the Surat King, is living, you know, and uh, he is very powerful man. Under his ruling, everybody was living very happily. In Ayodhya, everybody was sleeping very peacefully. But Dasarath is not able to sleep very peacefully, peacefully because. You don't have a son to carry on the kingdom. Everybody was sleeping. Then Valmiki writes that people cannot sleep in the world. Those have got lots and lots of money, they won't be able to sleep. Those have got different kinds of you know health issues, you know, money issues, you know, miserable, they cannot sleep. And policemen will not be able to sleep until he catch the thief. A thief won't be able to sleep unless he escapes from the policeman. A student won't be able to sleep unless he properly studies. You know, if your children are sleeping too much, you must understand you cannot do anything with them. Your future is gone. So in this way, say there are people who cannot sleep, but here Ayodhya, that you know, Dasarat, not able to sleep because he don't have a son. So he inquired from his family guru, Vashista, what I should do. He said you should perform Putra Kame Yagam. He performed that yagya, you will get a son. They were preparing the yagya. At that time, Lord Brahma, the demigods, they went to Vishnu. They cry, calling Vishnu. Now we can't take, you know, the activities of Ravana. He is, you know, destroying everything there, so you have to come. So Lord Vishnu said, don't worry, you know, in due course of time, I will come now, you know, Dasarath. King Dasarath is already preparing, you know, a yagya to come as, you know, putra come as the yagam you want to do to gain a child, and I'm going to be born as Ram then. At that time, you know, Lord Brahma, he said, in that case, I want to become a monkey to help you. I'll become a jumbo one. Krishna said, okay, you come. And Lord Shiva said, I also wanted to come and help you, my dear Lord. I want to become Anuman. Krishna said, okay, you become Anuman. And Surya said, you know, sun planet, he said, I want to become a Sugriva monkey. He said, come. The Indra said, I want to become a Bali. You know, in this way, the 33 million demigods, they said, we wanted to become monkeys in the forest, we wanted to help you on your mission. After that, you know, Lord Shiva went back to his own about Kailash, and Parvati says, how you can leave me alone and go? That's not very good. I'm your wife, you have to go with you. And he said, I already promised I want to become a monkey to your brother. And Parvati said, you become a monkey, I'll become a tail. 
<laughs> so the monkey body is Shiva, the tail is Parvati. <laughs> so they appeared, you know, all of them here yeah, performing Yajna. And that moment, you know, there's a beautiful personality appeared from the Yajna cone. And he brought, you know, a sweet rice and he gave it to Dasarat. You now he gave it to your wife. So he gave, you know, uh, to um, uh, one third he has given to uh, Lord Ra, I know, um, Dasarat's first wife, Kausalya. Another he gave it, you know, uh, to the uh, Kaikeyi. And another he gave it to Sumitra, then finally, yes, you know, a little bit, he wiped out everything and gave it again to Sumitra. So Ram was born to Kai Kausalya, Bharadhan was born to Kaikeyi, and, you know, Lashman and Satrugyan were born to Sumitra. So in this way, they were growing very nicely in the palace, and one time Sumitra, you know, um, Vishwamitra Muni came, he said, I need your son to come with me. And that moment, you know, Dasarath, you know, he felt like he's asking for his life. He cannot be departed from, you know, Lord Ram. And uh, Vasisa says the time for Ram to go away from here because his glory is only, you know, within the, you know, Ayodhya. His glory has to spread everywhere. That means he has to leave the place and go and come back. And that time Dasaratha remembered that was a curse he has got from a person called, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 a son of a blind, you know, parents, you know, is a Kumara. And when Dasarath one time he went to the forest, you know, hunting, and, you know, just by hearing some sound, without looking, he can, you know, shoot the arrow and kill the people, whoever, animal. So at that time, when somebody was picking some water from the river, he thought that's an animal, he shot the arrow. And then there was a person by the name of Sravana Kumar, you know, then the arrow shot him, you know, then he was lying down, dying, then he told, you know, actually I came here to take water for my parents, my parents are blind, so now please take me to them. So he carried, you know, Dasarat carried to them. And then the parents were very upset, they said, you know, the way we have lost our son, and we are separated, we are dying, you know, in the separation of our son, in the similar way that you will die in the separation of your son. And, you know, when Vishwamitra Muni came and asked for Ram, and immediately remembered that curse, you know, is coming through. He said, I cannot be, you know, apart from my son. He said, no, 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 Vishwamitra Muni said, you know, you promised to give, and you are the king, you should keep your promise. In this way, Ram, you know, left with him, you know, because there was some problem in the forest. Whenever Vishwamitra Muni wants to some yajna, you know, fire sacrifice and worship and all, there are, you know, demons like, you know, Tadagai, Marichan and all, you know, they were disturbing the, the, the Yagya. So Ram went there and then killed those demons and then, you know, then Vishwamitra Muni took him to Mithila, where Sita Devi is there. And on the way they visited, you know, the, the small cottage of uh, Gautama Rishi. Then his wife, uh, you know, Aghalya was cursed by the Gautama Rishi because she was the most beautiful girl being created by Lord Brahma. And then, you know, then Indra always wanted to get this girl, but somewhere or other he, she was married to Gautama Rishi. And in the absence of the Gautama Rishi, the husband, Indra disguised, you know, in the form of the husband, Gautama Rishi came and, you know, indulged, you know, with this girl, Aghalya. So then Gautam Rishi, you know, through his, you know, mystic power, he came to know that his wife and another person having some affair, he came and cursed, you know, the wife to become a stone. So there was a stone lying there. The girl was crying, please deliver. He said, no, Ram will come. By the touch of the lotus feet of Ram, you'll be regained, you know, your original form again. So Lord uh, Ram, on the way to, you know, Mithila, then he, you know, he put his lotus feet on the stone and then she became a woman again. When he was married to Sita, you know, Sita told Ram, you know, I want one promise from you. Ram asked, what is the promise? No, no, I heard on the way to hear that, you know, by the touch of your foot, you know, that the stone became a woman. Is it true? 
from CS. And then I, she said, look at my ne necklace and everything. There are so many stones that there. My father has given me. I hope, you know, you're not going to make all these stones to become a woman, you know. <laughs> Give me the promise. And, you know, so in this way that, you know, when they, that time they were, you know, the Soyam Varam, you know, there's a time and the father was thinking about, you know, getting, you know, Sita married. And, uh, you know, then only way is that because she has got, uh, you know, Dhanus, you know, Shiva Dhanus, bow she is keeping, because they was given by Lord Shiva into that, you know, family generation. And they need, you know, 8,000 people with the elephant strength to carry the, you know, the Shiva Dhanus. So, but one time while playing, you know, some friends say there's some fruits in the tree, you know, we need your help. And Sita Devi from the left hand, you know, she picked up the, you know, that, you know, bow, Siva Dhanusu, which needs 8,000 people with the elephant strength to carry. She with the left hand, she carried and plucked the fork and put it back again. The minister noticed this thing, they went and told, you know, the king, the Sarat, do you know the power of your girl, the strength? She can lift, you know, the bow, she, you know, very powerful. Then the Sarat was thinking, you know, somebody wants to marry my daughter, he's got to be more powerful than my daughter, otherwise his life will be finished. <laughs> so he was thinking, thinking that like nobody can, you know, be equal, then Lord Ram comes. So Vishwantara Muni says, you know, there's a, you know, there's a Shiva Dhanus, is there going to have a look. Then Ram understand that, you know, job to do. Then, you know, he lifts it up, you know, then they realize there is the right person, they were married. They come back to, you know, um, you know, Ayodhya, and they were living very happily. And one time, uh, Dasarath, King Dasarath, he went in front of the mirror, then he saw some white air, you know, on his head, you know. Then he understands the time for retirement. So this is the time, not you got all the white hair, but you're not retiring. Still you wanted to make money and thinking about, you know, there's a Varnashram system is very nice. Prabhupada says that, you know, in the Varnashram system, you know, you have to slowly come out from family entanglement. It's not till the time of death, you know, you stay with your family, seeing that, you know, your son married, then his, you know, his family, um, you know, get a child and then you go and take care of your grandchild. That's a duty, not a duty of, you know, a real civilized human life. And Prabhupada was telling that was a time that in Krishna's time, you no know, Vidura was trying to educate, you know, Dhritarashtra is a time for you to live. And Prabhupada said at that time there was only one Dhritarashtra. Now it's full of Dhritarashtra everywhere in the world. Nobody wants to retire. <laughs> so now you look at the white hair, you understand now it's time for me to retire. I have to put you know, Ram into the kingdom. So he was making an event to Vasista. I'm thinking that Ram to be you know, the next king here, what do you think? And Vasista say Ram is all the way qualified to sit on the throne. You know why? Because once Ram was five years old and he was playing with his friend in the Gurukulam and that time, you know, he stepped on a frog, you know, the frog is under the foot of Lord Ram and Lord Ram did not realize and the frog was crying and Lord Ram looking here and there and then finally he saw the frog under his foot and then he asked the frog, why you are crying? And he says, you know, I'm, I'm in pain because, you know, your foot, you put your foot into on me and Ram says, you know, now you call Ram. He said, if Ram has caused you the problem, only Ram can release you from the problem. So you have to call Lord Ram's name. And you know, the frog say, how can I call Ram? The one is causing me problem. And if Ram causes you the problem, he's the only person who can release you from the problem. You call him. And the frog, you know, and Ram crying, seeing the pain of the frog. So Vasista says, you know, five years old boy, he is not able to take the crying of an animal. What to talk about? Somebody become a leader to the world, then he must have that kind of compassion in himself, you know, that you know, he feels that is his own suffering. So in every way that Ram is qualified. They're making arrangement and you know the news went to Kaikei. Everybody, then there was a maid servant in the palace, you know, Mantara, and she heard this thing, she came and told Kaikeyi, don't allow these things to happen. Let your son Bharat become, you know, the king. And everybody in the kingdom, everybody likes Ram, but this one lady, Mantara, even Kaikeyi, you know, like Ram, but this one lady, Mantara, did not like, you know, Ram, because 
there was one incident happened, you know, when he was in the Guru Kul, you know, he got, you know, a bow and arrow, he was playing around. And Mantara, you know, she was walking, you know, and then she got a big, you know, the lady keeps a big, you know, like, you know, round hair here, and she got some flowers there. And, you know, and she was walking like that, you know. And one while she was walking, Ram, you know, um, playfully took his arrow. He shot, you know, he shot the hair of the, you know, the hair of the mantara and the whole air fall on the ground with the flower. The mantara got very angry. She said, oh, you think you are the king, son of the king, and you think you're going to come into the throne? And today I curse you that, you know, you'll never sit in the throne. So she was personally had some enmity, some problem with Ram. So she went and told Kaikeyi, you know, look, you know, and your son will become a beggar in the street. You'll have not have anything. Better you make your Bharat son. And she said how to do this thing. He said in the Samara war, you have no, that your husband, Dasarada has given you, you know, um, um, benediction that uh, he can, you know, give you two benediction to ask for. And you say later when he required will ask, now is the time to ask him. And f first benediction, tell that your son, you know, Bharat has become a king. Second, that, you know, Ram has to go to the forest for 14 years. So these are the things that, you know, Kaikeyi have asked, you know, Dasarat. And Dasarat, there's no choice, no, no anything, how to avoid this thing. And Chatras, Dhatras were very reluctant to pass this message to Ram, you know. And at that time Kaikeyi personally called Ram and told that your father has given me this promise. And I today have asked him, but he's reluctant to tell you, you know, the message. And you have to go to forest and my son Bar Baradhan will become the king. So Ram is very, you know, saintly person. He said, my dear mother Kaikeyi, why? Well, you have to tell that my father said I must go to the forest. You know, your son has to become a king. Even you ask me to go to the forest, I'll go to the forest. So, one moment the father said you become a king, another moment the stepmother said you go to the forest. In both ways, when he was told that he'd become a king, he was not overjoyed by anything. In the similar way, because you know, when the mother, stepmother said you go to the forest, he also not affected because he has not taken anything personal on this matter. Then he prepared to go to forest and Kausalya, the mother says, no, why you have to go to forest? That is between your mother and stepmother. Why you have to go? Don't go. And she, Ram says, no, no, I have to go because I've given my words to my father. Very important. So please, you give me a blessing. And at that time, Kausalya was thinking what blessing I should give to my son. She said, Yam palayasi dharmatvam. <coughs> she said, my dear son, you know, you're going to forest for 14 years. If I give you money, you'll never use that. <laughs> if I prepare some nice food for you, that also, you know, won't last for 14 years. Today, because you're going to the forest because of the principle of dharma, then I give you the principle as dharma as a blessing, that the dharma will take you to the forest, it will protect you while you are there. Come back, the dharma will uplift you in your life. The dharma will be, you know, my blessing for you. So in this way, he was blessed. Then, you know, he came to the forest, you know, a lot of things happened in the forest that, you know, Surpanaka, you know, have come looking at the beauty of Ram, if he wants to attain Ram. But somewhere or other, Ram said, that's not possible, you approach Lashman. She went to Lashman, Lashman cut off the nose and ear of the, you know, uh, Surpanaka, and she went to the, you know, brother. And that was the first message that death is coming for Ravana, because she always thinking how to also put the brother into death, you know, kill him. Because her husband was more clever than Ravana. So Ravana could not tolerate that, you know, somebody is more clever than him. So he killed who, his own sister's husband. So she was thinking, when the time comes, I must bring the message where Ravana can get killed. So he came and told, there was a beautiful woman has come to the forest, hanging around with you know, Ram in the forest. She's very beautiful, only you are qualified to, you know, attain her. Go then, you know, in this way, uses Marisha, then, you know, they kidnapped, Jatai was killed. So on this way, they come and then, you know, they were looking for Sita, where then, you know, the monkey's been sent, you know. Because Anuman was mad and Anuman told that Sugriva, you know, he needs your help. 
And what was that? You know, Sukriva had a brother, you know, who was the Vali. And Vali is also like a demon. He, you know, fight with his own brother Sukriva, throw him out of the kingdom, and then he kidnap his own wife. And, you know, this story been mentioned to Lord Ram. Lord Ram said, now let us go and help Sukriva. And with the help of Sukriva, now we look for Sita Devi. So when they came and Sukriva said, my brother Ram, Vali is very powerful. And Ram said, no problem, I'll be, you know, standing at the back of a tree. You can call your brother to come to fight and I'll come and kill him. So Sukriva went then and he was calling Vali, Vali, come out, you know, we have to fight. And Vali had a very good wife, very intelligent wife. Vali wife told Tara, she's Tara. She said, you know, don't go out now because generally, normally your brother, you know, is not powerful, he's very scared of you. He ran away from here, but today he has come. I was told that he has come with Ram. Ram is very powerful, don't go. And Vali did not listen. You know, Valmiki writes, they said, you know, Vali died because not listening to his wife. And Dasarada died because listening to his wife. <laughs> and Vali writes, if your wife is more clever than you, please listen to her. If you are more clever than you, the wife must listen to the, you know, if the husband is more clever, the wife listen to the husband. If, you know, wife is more clever, the husband listen to the wife. So in this way, Vali told by the wife, you know, one intelligent wife, don't go, you'll get killed. But he said, you're a woman, you know, don't talk to me like that, I'm very powerful. So he went and fight with, you know, Sugriva. And Sugriva is getting beaten up like anything by Vali. And Ram was standing there and Sugriva was looking at the back, you know, why Ram, Ram is not coming, Ram is not coming. And then finally he ran to Ram, he said, you said you're going to come to help me, but you're standing at the back of the tree. My brother is beating me like anything. Ram said, I'm not able to, you know, identify who's actually who, because both are twins, you know. So he said, now he put a garland, kanchina of a garland into the neck, you know, of Sugriva. He said, now you go and fight. So he fight, and then at that moment, you know, Ram from the back of a tree, he shot an arrow onto Vali, then Vali, you know, was lying down. The reason why Ram from the back of a tree shot the arrow, <coughs> Is that Vali has got a boon that anybody he sees more powerful than him, he, may, he takes the power of that person. For that reason, he was hidden at the back of a tree. Now he's lying down on the ground, and his son Angada came. He was crying at you know Vali. Vali said, "Why you cry? You know, don't worry about." It. He said, "Ram is very kind and very merciful to my brother Sugriva. He came to this world. He gave the world." But for me, he gave his spiritual world. I'm dying, I'm going to his own kingdom. So Ram is more kind to me than anybody else. So from there, you know, with the help of Sugriva, all the monkeys been sent to four directions to seek for, you know, uh, Sita. And somewhere or other, for, they've been given one month time, but they were not able to, were not able to see where is, you know, Sita been kept and they came to, you know, on the shore of this side of the river is a Mandara hill and they all are sitting and talking, crying, how to go back to Ram, we don't know, you know, time is finished, we do not know where Sita is. At that time, while they're talking and, you know, one of the, you know, uh, uh, monkey said, it is all full of a Jatayu. Why? Because Jatayu saw that Sita been kidnapped and Jatayu went and fought with the Ravana and Jatayu should have killed Ravana. Because Jatayu did not kill the Ravana, now we got, you know, this problem. Not able to, you know, seek where is Sita. And Jatayu's brother was sitting, you know, somebody, the name, sitting on top of the tree and then he was crying, came down, he said, what happened to my brother Jatayu? So the narrator, you know, where Sita was kidnapped, Jatayu was killed. And that time, you know, somebody said, I know where is Sita. He said, from the top of the tree, I can see she's on the, you know, on the other side of the, you know, forest, the Lanka in the Ashoka forest. So now all decided they have to, f they have to go and seek for Sita, look for her, and then no monkey, you know, can fly the 800 miles from there. You know, the ocean is about 800 miles from this shore to the other side. They don't know what to do. Then Jambawan, you know, he said to Anuman, you are the only person who can fly. Anuman said, I'm merely a monkey out to fly. He said, no, you're not a monkey. Actually, you're Lord Shiva yourself, and you are an you know, empowered, you know, servant of Ram. And it's just because of your naughtiness, and you're very notorious. 
because you got a boon from the 33 million demigods. One time you're flying towards the sun thinking it's a fruit, and then that time you got you know, punched you know, by Indra. You fall on the ground and your father, the, you know, wind air, you know, wind god, Varuna, he was very upset and then he told the demigod, I'm not leaving the air anymore for the world. All the demigods, they were afraid, you know, without air, how are we going to uh, live? And that time, you know, all the demigods, you know, promise that, you know, we give all the benedictions to Anuman. He can be transforming in any, you know, form. He can do anything. And he wants to die, he can die. No need to die, no need to die. And Anuman has got 33 million demigods, you know, benediction boon. So that time Jambuan said that, you know, you had this, all these 33 million demigods had given you the boon. But you know, with this boon you become a little bit arrogant, you go around, you are disturbing all the sages in the forest and the sages has given you the curse that you'll forget about your, you know, your power. Until another monkey and come and tells you. So now Jambawan, the, another monkey tells Anuman, you know, this all the boon you have got, you're not an ordinary monkey, then you are the only person who can fly. So how to fly, how to gain back my power? Jambawan said, just talk, call the name of Ram. He uttered Ram, Ram, you'll have the power in this way. The power, he went to Lanka, he met Sita. And you know, somewhere other, this thing is over. Now, um, Ram brings the message. You know, Ram has got a promise, and he has taken a vow that, you know, Ekapadne Vratadharo Rajarese charitam suchi Swadharmam apivedayam Shikshayam swayam acharat Ram, Lord Ram has taken a vow that he only will live with one wife, only one wife. You know, no more other woman. Never look at the other woman. There's a promise. Wow, Lord Ram has taken. So he was not looking at any woman at all. And you know, the, the girls of Vrindavan, they were very attracted to Ram. And they always wanted to know, at least one day we have to stay with Ram. So they were waiting for a moment because every time Ram is surrounded by the servant, other peoples, and one time, you know, there is some bhajan group have come from another place. They were performing Ram bhajan in the Ayodhya city. So all the servants, without telling Ram, all went to hear the Ram bhajan in the Ayodhya city. And Ram was living alone, Sita was in upset, he was on the, you know, garden, lying down. And that time, the woman of Ayodhya, all the girls, they took, you know, bath, they put on a nice dress with, you know, fruits and everything. They come to see Ram. They say, Ram, we've been waiting for this moment that you can be by yourself, that you can approach you. We have got a desire, even one, one life, you know, we wanted to live with you, please bless. Ram says, no, I've taken a vow, that no other woman in my life. And they fainted, you know, Ram woke them up. Ram said, look, you know, I give you another benediction. This one life, oh, I come as Krishna. And you marry me, whole life we can stay together. That whole life or you want one moment? And they said, okay, when you come as Krishna. He said, I come as Krishna, I'll marry all of you, don't worry. So he sent them back. So that is how Ram avoided all this situation. And Jara, Grani, Vyadi, Nadi, that at the time of ruling of Ram, he ruled the kingdom for 11,000 years and nobody went into any kinds of, you know, difficulties. Even they don't even have any mental torture in the, in the, in the you know, what to talk about, physical torture. There was a time, even the dog, you know, one time, the dog was crying at night and Ram was lying down. Ram called Lashman, why the dog is crying? Even crying of a dog, you know, Ram is not able to tolerate. And he told Lashman to go and look, you know, why the dog is crying. And he went and saw the dog is standing on three legs, you know, one leg, one leg is broken. And he brought the dog, you know, he told the dog, you know, you come inside, Ram wants to talk to you. The dog says, the animal cannot go into anybody's house, you know, I'll stand there. Then he went and told and Ram came out, you know, Ram, look at the dog, is crying. So Ram asked the dog, you know, what you're crying, what happened? He said, one Brahmana, he broke my leg. And Ram sent somebody to go and look for this, you know, Brahmana who have, you know, broken the leg of this dog. And somehow they found the Brahmana, brought the Brahmana. And Ram asked him, you know, why are you going to break the leg of the dog? And Brahmana says, I was carrying some food for my family and the dog is sniffing and running behind me and he's, you know, barking, you know. So I was agitated. I just took a stone and just throw like that, you know, hit the leg of the dog and then dog, you know, the leg is broken. 
And Ram said, that is not very good because, you know, you are Brahmana. The dog is sniffing, the dog is barking, there's a nature of the dog to do this thing. But you as a Brahmana, you should be very peaceful, very tolerant, very forgiving. Samodama Tapasa, you should have all the wonderful qualities. But you did not act like a Brahmana. So now you are in, you know, in fault. And people were surrounded, people were talking, what to do, what to do, you know, he must be cursed, you know, he must be given punishment. And Ram said, let the dog say what punishment to be given. And they asked the dog, and the dog says, you know, please make him the you know, president of one temple on the other village. And all wondered, you know, why, you know, the, you know, the Brahmana has done something wrong to the dog, and now the dog said, make him a president of one temple. And how? You know, so he has to be carried on the palanquin, and you know, a president of temple is not a small thing. He has to be given Mahaprasadam, all the honor, you know, must be given. And everybody was wondering, you know, how he make him a president. So they asked, you know, Ram, what happened now? Ram said, you ask the dog, why he, you know. The people were wondering whether it's a curse or it's a blessing. He got promoted. And they asked the dog, dog says, you know, yes, he has to become a president of temple. Why? But previously he said, I was the president of the temple. <laughs> and what happened? Everybody coming to the temple, I was barking to them, you know, barking at them like a dog, you know. I was putting everybody into, you know, great miseries, you know, trouble. So now for him to become a dog, you know, that's the best place for him to go. So he was sent there. So I saw Ram was very, you know, this thing that in Ram's kingdom, even somebody dies, you know, Sumantra, the minister of Ram, he died, you know, he, people can live for 100,000 years during his time. And, you know, anybody died before that time, you know, they can question Ram, what happened, you know, in your kingdom, this thing has happened. So one of his ministers died, he got nine more days to go, but, you know, the Yamadutas came and took his life. Uh, Ram went to his house, you know, minister's house, and looked at his horoscope. When he was born, he got nine more days to live. And, you know, he go and chase the Yamadutas, I said, you know, how you can take a man, you know, without the time has come in my kingdom, this one cannot happen. And Yamadutta says, no, 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 his time has come. Ram says, how oh, his time has come? How oh, you have counted? He says, the moment he come out from the womb of a mother, his head and the hands have come out, you know. And from that time, we already counted, you know, that his, 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 you know, his life has begun. Ram said, that is not right. The whole body must touch the ground. Then only his birthday began, you know. So he got another nine days. So he brought him back. And they went and complained to Yamaraj, you know, look at this, you know, Ram have stopped, you know, from bringing this fellow. And Yamaraj, you know, he brings his, you know, weapon, he comes to see Ram. And that time Ram sent his son Lava, you know, you go and fight with this guy. A Rava fight, you know, a small boy. Fight with Yamaraj, Yamaraj, you know, he lost the battle. And Yamaraj, you know, out of fear, he came and fought that feet at the feet of Lord Ram. He said, Ram, you and me are one family, or we should fight. And Ram asked, you know, how we are one family? He said, no, you know, you see, you are, you know, not different from, you know, the, you know, Mahavishnu. And I'm born in the navel of Mahavishnu. From me comes the, you know, Marichi. From Marichi comes the Kasyapa. I'm the son of a Kasyapa. So we all are one family. We should not fight. And Ram told him in that case, you know, now from today onward, anybody calling, uttering my name, you should not go to them. Yamaraj, you know. A similar is given when they wanted to build in the bridge and all were carrying rock and, you know, trees, this and that. Anuman was busy carrying the rock and coming. That time the Saturn planet came to Anuman and said, now is your time has come. For seven and a half years, you know, I have to sit on top of your head. I have to give you all the, you know, problems. And Anuman says, no, I have no time for this. No, I'm, I'm in the service of Ram. And uh, certain planet says, I'm also being, you know, kept in the service of Ram to go and meet people, you know, and then discipline them. Now your time has come. So what are you going to do? He said that the, that the certain planet said, for somebody I'll become their wife, you know, give problem to the husband. For somebody I become, you know, husband, you know, give problem to the wife. For somebody I become a dog, you know, to give problem. Somebody I know I'll become, you know, the, the, you know, the boss of the company to give problem. But to you, I said, I'm going to sit on your head, you know, that is where I'm going to give you problem. Anuman said, you know, okay, you do your job, I do my job. So the Satan went and sat on the head of the Hanuman. Anuman was picking up the stone and then he was putting on top. 
and you know in between you know the Saturn planet is sitting and the stone goes on up to him and then take another stone and another stone you know and then the Saturn planets were crying oh Ram please let me go let me go let me go Ram said I did not invite you you came that's your problem I'm not going to let you go and Saturn planet said if you let me go I'll give you, you know a promise and whatever you want I'll give you and Anuman says okay in that case that any of my devotees are chanting my name. For oh, Saturn, you should not go and disturb them. And the word has been given. So in this way, you know, Sumandra was brought back. And there was another five years old boy, you know, he died. And the parents go and complain to Ram what happens in a kingdom like that. And Ram sent everybody, nobody could see any problem. What's the reason that this boy could die? And finally Ram himself personally went, he went through the forest. He saw that there was a Sudra, you know, upside down he's performing austerity. And Ram says, you know, Sudra job is not performing austerity. That's another person should do. So you should follow your Swadharma, you got a personal duty to do. How oh, you can do this thing? And the Sudra was crying, you know, what we should do now? You know, we don't have any deliverance you know, if we don't do this thing. Ram said, don't worry, you know, I'll come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again. At that time, all the sutra overall, all will be delivered from the world. So in this way that, you know, Ram, Ram appeared in this world to bring in the wonderful exemplary way of living in the world. And Krishna comes to remind us about that knowledge of exemplary living. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, you know, that you got a good character like Ram, you got a good knowledge from Krishna, but without devotion, without love, without bhakti, these two also don't attract people. So the three personalities come, Ram comes to give you a good character, show you the good character, Krishna comes to give you the good knowledge, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to give the prema bhakti, the love, in this way, you become a complete human being and cross over the cycle of repeated birth and death. And today, I think Kirpa Maya Prabhu is coming. He's going to give you more, you know, information about the appearance of Lord Ram. Thank you so much for being here today. And I think today is, you know, also update fasting. And uh, we got more chanting and more remembrance of Lord Ram. And Sita Devi, Preman Havrita Silena. Sita Devi is as good as Ram. She got a lot of opportunity to you know, leave Ram and go. I know, you know, Ravana told Sita Devi, what is there in this Ram? He's hanging around with monkey. Don't have anything, you know. I got my kingdom. I will make you the chief queen of, you know, uh, Lanka. You come to me. But with all this, you no know, offer, Sita Devi, Sita Devi said, no, no. You know, I'm only with Ram. So with all these things, Ram had some option, opportunity not leaving Sita. Sita had opportunity not leaving Ram. When the marriage time, the father of Sita, you know, told my my daughter will be like a moon. You know, that you know, she'll bring the cooling, coolingness in your life and wherever you move, you know, she'll move with you. So in this way that, you know, a great you know, story have come in the form of Ramayana. And uh, let us you know, today pray to Lord Ram that you know, he can give us more blessing, that we can remain as a humble devotee like Anuman for the rest of our life, and take the opportunity to give the message of Ram and Krishna to all other people around us. Thank you so much. Jai Sri Sri Sita Ram Lashman Anuman Ki Jai Nitai Gora Pramanande Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu Yai.